Hey guys, don't mind the background noise, We've got a lot of prints going on, but I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, I have an unusual filament that I don't use very often, it's ColorFab XTCF20 Carbon Fiber Filament, and say that five times fast. And it's an interesting filament, and there's a couple of things you need to do different to make it work, and I wanted to share that information with you. You ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, first of all, welcome to Aware Nerdy is Cool. My name is Paul, and as you can probably hear in the background, I got 3D printers going like crazy. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I cover 3D printing, I do a lot of prop stuff, I do a lot of R2 building, BB-8 building, you name it, I got all kinds of projects I'm working on. If you are already a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, push the button and become one. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. And the printers are squawking away in the background there. Sorry about that. So, ColorFab CF20 carbon fiber filament. So, they, I have the 2.85 millimeter stuff for my Ultimaker. I'm working on a different uh, project right now. I'm making uh, a, a, a E3D mount and Bontech mount for one of my printers. And I wanted to have that really nice matte finish because obviously it's going to be very visible on top of the printer. And the XTCF20 has a beautiful, beautiful matte finish, as I'll show you here in these little clips. Uh, some of the projects that I've uh, already completed, and it looks amazing. Now, if you're trying to find information from ColorFab on the right settings to use and things like this, it's very far and few between, really, if you're trying to find the right settings to use to get decent prints. Another video I can uh, recommend to you is CNC Kitchen did a great video on this uh, filament about a year ago and there's a lot of interesting uh, safety tips he brings up. I will link that in the description below. But carbon fiber filament, it does have uh, tiny strands of carbon fiber uh, chopped up and in there and uh, uh, it does give some additional strength uh, in, in some ways but again the, the Carbon fiber, though the whole beauty of that is the weave. So obviously you're not going to get that in 3D printing. Uh, you're just going to get that pretty much on the x-axis the way that the filament is laid out. But that's not the point of this video. First of all, my Ultimaker 2 is what I'm using and because carbon fiber filament is very, very abrasive, I am using an early version of the Ruby nozzle. Uh, I got that from Anders Olsen a couple of years ago. So uh, that has a uh, Looks similar to a water jet ruby in there, so the filament is passing through that, so it's not wearing away at my brass nozzle. And the temperature range that I found that worked really well for me was, I do the first layer a little bit hotter than the rest. Uh, so I found like 254 degrees Celsius, and then 250 degrees Celsius after that. Now, the other thing you're gonna wanna mess with is going to be the cooling. It doesn't take, I mean, this stuff, <laughs> it sets up pretty quick. And I found that 25% cooling was just right. Uh, as always with any new filament, I recommend that you do a couple test prints. An extrusion multiplier would be a really good idea to find out how much, how much flow you're getting from your, uh, uh, from your extruder and you know, how much filament is coming through. Uh, I found after some testing, I have it here right in front of me, that after I did some testing, my extrusion multiplier was uh, 0.90. So I know some people have had to go higher, but for me, it wound up being lower. As I mentioned, CNC Kitchen did a great video on this material as well. The precautions that they mentioned is, we're talking about those small fibers and they're very tiny. And if you look at the material safety data sheet, you know, you can, I don't want to scare you about this filament, but I mean, um, I noticed that when I was handling the filament, I kind of felt like I, I had like, uh, kind of like handling a fiberglass, like maybe like little mini splinters or something. So my recommendation, and as, as he recommends as well too, it might be a good idea for this to, you know, if you're going to be handling the filament, the filament to load and unload, you know, put some gloves on. Uh, if, you're, if you really want to have extra care, you know, put the mask on or even, you know, the, the safety glasses. And the other thing that I did, again, I don't know, particle density, HEPA filters, charcoal filters, but whenever I use this stuff, I run the air, fil uh, the air purifier down in the, uh, in the shop just to make sure that, you know, if there's any of that stuff lingering around that, you know, perhaps it's going to get caught by the air purifier. Okay, so I mentioned a couple of the basic settings. I mentioned temperature. I mentioned, you know, getting your uh, extrusion multiplier or in other words, figuring out the flow for this material. 
The one thing you're going to notice is that like a lot of PETG based filaments, this stuff likes to blob. It can be very frustrating because uh, you'll be looking at your print in progress and you will notice that the hot end is completely covered in this stuff and eventually it will form a blob and it will deposit somewhere on your print. The good news is that the cleanup on this stuff is pretty easy. Most of the time you're going to see where the retraction points are and the post process of cleaning those up isn't too bad. Again, I'd recommend the safety equipment if you're concerned about, especially if you're going to do any sanding or stuff like that, if you want to have an abundance of caution. Okay, so I mentioned a couple of the safety questions slash issues with the material. I've mentioned that it's a real challenge to print. It likes to blob. Retraction is going to be kind of challenging. Getting the right temperatures, oi, oi, oi. So why, oh why, Paul, you mentioned this stuff? Because the finish, if you get this stuff dialed in just right, the finish looks absolutely amazing. And that's why on prints, for example, like the V6 and Bontech mount that I'm printing for my TiVo Tornado, I want that thing to look amazing and it's going to. So there it is. So I hope you guys found this information useful. If you decide to give this material a go, let me know in the comment section below how it turned out for you. Now, if you want to stay in touch with me, I'm on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, Instagram, I'm also on Twitter, and of course the website, where nerdyiscool.com. I thank you guys for watching. If you wish to make a donation to the channel and help me out, the link down below in the description gives you two options to either do the Patreon or uh, via the PayPal. So if you decide to do either one of those, thank you very much. Thanks for watching, and remember, this is where Nerdy is Cool. Stay nerdy.